this video, I use the oldest pen in the world. Okay, probably not in the world, but that I could get my hands on and I'm gonna push it to its limits and see if it holds up to today's standards of penmanship and stuff. This is the oldest pen I could find. How old, you ask? The pen is an 1892 Swan Marble Tood. Todd Tood. Toad? How long ago was 1892? How long ago was 1892? 127 and a half. You know I'm gonna round that up for the thumbnail and title day. 130 years old, amazing. I haven't, I haven't laid my eyes upon this majestic thing yet. This is where we could all be really let down. There it is, look at that. Let's start off by drawing a line, shall we? Off to a good start. It's not a cheap pen. I don't know what to do. <laughs> there was a business card. We're gonna give Jono a call. Hello. Hello. Um, I purchased from you a very old pen. I think it's around 130 years old and it's not making any marks. You'd have to fill it with an eye dropper. Where do I unscrew it? I don't see a join. Maybe it's taken a little bit. Thank you for your help. Okay. Let's soak this old girl in some water. I don't know why I'm calling it old girl. When was Titanic? They call the Titanic old girl. This pen is older than Titanic. All right, I'm just, I'm just gonna soak this. I've applied a little warmth. <gasps> oh, we've got some twisting. There it is. I've just got some fountain pen black ink. Got my eyedropper. <laughs> I hope this works. Pop it in there. I think this is how this was when I unscrewed it. Oh, there we go. You can see the ink starting to feed through. Oh, hey, that feels pretty good actually. That's cool. Can I color in an area? Wow, that feels... That feels really good. Okay, so we're off to the races. I have a pen, I know how to refill it, it works. Now we're gonna use it for the rest of the video. And I really wanna put this thing through its paces in a number of different ways. But I'm gonna take the opportunity while I'm learning to use and experience this new tool to uh, learn a few skills along the way. You know where this is going. Danger, the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an amazing learning platform with over 30,000 courses in illustration, drawing, design, business, photography, videography, and loads more. I've got a couple of courses there myself you might be interested in checking out, one on how to be a YouTuber and the other on talking to camera. So that's a cool place to get started as well as the courses they'll be recommending that I've used in this video. And I highly recommend you go check out Skillshare today and you can do that without spending a penny to really experience the platform and soak it all in for two months absolutely free. This is limited to 500 people, so the first 500 people to use the link in the description will get two months of premium Skillshare membership to experience their many thousands of courses and up their game and their skills today. I'm gonna get started learning and practicing and experiencing. This This is genuinely really cool. I didn't expect it to be like so Im immediately amazing. All right, <laughs> let's get started. Or at least I would get started if this bloody pen wasn't so goddamn spilly. I mean, the first thing I tried to do was write the classic quick brown fox pen gram, but as you can see, I was met with some very blobby writing. At first I figured this was my lack of pen control or something I was doing wrong in how I was writing. So I attempted to just forge ahead and figure it out as I went, you know, like kinesthetically. <laughs> it's how I roll, but no, nope. Nope, 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 nope. This pen was all of a sudden the worst thing in my life. And I mean, literal seconds ago, this thing was really impressive and dreamy to write with. Then before you know it, it was spilling its guts all over the place. At first I thought it was how much ink I put in that I'd overfilled it and after a bunch of scribbles, it had calmed the f down and write normally again, but no. No, this thing poured itself out like the sins of a killer in the confession booth. Can you tell I have murder on my mind? Wait, isn't that a song by Sam Smith? I'm getting distracted. Point is, I paid hundreds of dollars for a 130 year old pen, and I guess I'd be a fool to think that wouldn't involve some troubleshooting, so that's what I did. Deconstructing the pen and trying to find out how it was meant to work. The whole time, of course, running the risk of breaking a very, very precious old item. <laughs> now, the funny little black split cylinder behind the nib of the pen is what's called the ink feed, and obviously this was overfeeding the old girl, and I'd already pulled it apart and put it back together multiple times and also played with how much the pen needed to be filled with ink. But there was also this very little wire bit that when I first pulled the pen apart was tucked in against the ink feed. And I guess this was to apply some pressure against the ink 
feed in a way that affected the flow of the ink through the nib. It took dozens of deconstructions and reconstructions and cleaning to figure out exactly where this little wire was meant to go. FYI, it goes behind the ink feed, sort of between it and the nib, and the little wire loop needed to be bent a little bit further against the curve of the little curve on the ink feed cylinder just to apply the right amount of pressure in just the right place to hold the ink feed against the nib in order to feed just the right amount of ink. Anyway, I hope that helps those of you who plan on uh, buying a centuries old ink pen anytime soon. But hours later, when I had finally figured out the Goldilocks place and pressure, I could hardly believe it and needed to draw lots of scribbles on the page just to make 100% sure I was good to go. And I was. I was finally ready to use the pen. Thank God! So my first goal and activity was to reapproach calligraphy, both to reawaken what I'd learned a few years back when I last did a video on calligraphy and to see if with this pen, once it got working, I could take my skills a step further, really push this pen to its limits. Starting off with two classes by Bryn Chernoff, the first one called An Introduction to Modern Script Calligraphy and the second Calligraphy 2, Revenge of the Calligraphy. I'm just kidding, it's, it's called Finding Your Personal Script Style. It's just the second class. Anyway. And Next I followed two classes by Audrey, the first one called Modern Calligraphy Pointed Pen Basics. Her classes were really a perfect fit for me. It felt like her teaching style and the lessons themselves were exactly for where I was at. And the good news is, now that I'd figured out the pen, the love part of my love-hate relationship with this antique pen came in. I, I didn't have to dip or worry about ink flow anymore. Instead, I could focus on playing with the letters. And yes, I know you can obviously get modern calligraphy pens that have the ink reservoir and you don't have to worry about dipping, but there is also something extra special about writing with something that feels like history. I don't know, it certainly felt special. It made me feel like I wanted to do it justice and, and really empowered me feeling Creative. I wrote down a bunch of improvised alphabet fonts and really started to get into the exploratory process. And then I took it further with her next class that I followed called Modern Calligraphy Flourish Confidently, in which she goes through the kind of flourishes that you can use to get fancy and how they work, what makes them look good and how to apply them to both ascenders and descenders and, and sort of creating them in, in different levels of complexity so that you could adjust it for where you're at. After following these classes through the day and with the pen finally working well, I felt empowered to experiment and be creative and put it into practice by inventing four improvised fonts, one after the other, writing out capital and lowercase alphabets, then the classic Fox pangram, because I mean, that's apparently that's the only full sentence I know how to try in calligraphy. And then I used an online random word generator to give me a handful of random words of a, a few syllables to write out in each of my new invented fonts. I did not make as much progress today as I had hoped I would. I am no expert, I've never claimed to be a calligraphy king. However, I did find myself able to pretty freely invent fonts and experiment a bit, which was really fun. By the end of my calligraphy session, I was able to invent four fonts, and I hadn't practiced these, I just came up with them on the fly. So we have this one, which is sort of like a fairly conservative calligraphy font, I guess you could say. I tried to go a little more flourishing with this one, which is quite similar and again, very similar to the calligraphy style I learned back when I previously tried calligraphy. But my favorite ones are actually these blockier ones. They feel really natural to me and I feel like they look the funnest and have the most character. I just really enjoyed the process and using a 130 year old pen actually helped in the end. Not in the beginning, just in the end. So I'm gonna take a break and come back tomorrow and approach something different. But now I think it's time to see what this baby can do 
when it comes to illustration. I'm gonna brush up on my skills specifically with cross hatching and shading and stuff so I can apply it to something cool, do a bit of a warm up and practice, and then I'm gonna slam out something as epic as I can with this very old, very cool pen. For the theme of my artwork, I thought it'd be really fun to flip the scene a little bit. What I mean by that is, well, you're watching someone in the year 2020 through an advanced display using a very old piece of technology from 1892. I thought it'd be really fun to draw a group of people from 1892 in an old fashioned medium using a piece of technology from 2020. See, it's like I'm reconnecting the pen to its past, calling to its own history and saying, hey, look at how connected our worlds are in this moment in time. Speaking of moments in time, obviously this pen is old, that's been said, but in really understanding and appreciating that, I thought it'd be fun to share with you some moments from the time that this pen was created, taking us all the way back to its golden years. Now getting started, let me just show you this Google image search of just typing 1890s. I mean, look at that. This, this is like a whole bunch of snapshots of things that would have been happening around the birth of this pen. This pen existed at the time that Thomas Edison and WKL Dickinson built the first motion picture camera system called the Kinetograph. Let's let that soak in a little bit. Like the technology that you're using now in your hands or on your desktop to view this video traces all the way back to the same time that this pen was made. This pen was around when Vincent van Gogh died in France, shooting himself at the age of 37. Alfred Nobel, the inventor of dynamite, arranged in his will to fund the Nobel Prize. I mean, who knows? He could have, he could have written that in his will with this pen. Unlikely, but it's cool thought. It's, it's actually possible. The first modern Olympic Games was held in Athens in Greece. The Statue of Liberty was constructed and Ellis Island was open to immigrants in New York City. The Eiffel Tower was inaugurated in Paris. Guys, this pen was around when basketball was invented, Tchaikovsky's Nutcracker was performed for the first time, and X-rays were discovered and, and invented. I mean, this very pen, that I hold in my hands could have been the pen that was involved in any one of those activities. Again, statistically, it's very, very unlikely, but it's cool to think of because it's, it's the only thing I own that is actually in the realm of some reality possible to exist in the, oh my God, it's, it's mind blowing. It's really, really, really cool. And obviously after the tumultuous beginning to my relationship with this pen, I'm really glad I got the hang of it and per persisted and that I also didn't break it. Because at the end of the day, while I could probably more easily do the same things that I'm doing on this pen with another cartridge based uh, nib pen, there really is something very cool about holding history in your hands and, and imagining all the other people that could have used this thing or, or the things that might have been invented or created or perhaps love letters or, or wills or contracts of, of uh, businesses starting or maybe just graffiti or obscene pictures. This pen could have been through quite a lot and we'll never know what it is, but this is where it is right now and it's very cool to be a part of its story. no, eight, 1890s illustration. I'm actually having fun trying to picture what it is that they're looking at on the phone and what their conversation is. Do you know what? Caption contest! Let me know in the comments what they're looking at on the phone and what they're saying. So how does one crush the candy exactly? Now why would Richard send me this picture? That's quite inappropriate. I'm gonna pin the best caption. You guys can also vote and let me know which ones you like. But if you don't have a caption, also just let me know what you think of the artwork. I'm, I'm really happy with it. And I'm gonna say, given that I really obviously started off <laughs> quite rocky with this pen, I got used to it with writing and then it was quite tricky to get used to with drawing. I'm actually really happy with the outcome. If anything, actually, the fact that it is pretty inconsistent to draw with sort of 
adds to the authenticity of the artwork being an 1890s piece with the textures and that slightly rough look and occasional sort of ink smudges or the fact that the lines are a bit uneven and, and quite textured is, is really cool. It really does feel like something you might come across in, a, in an old newspaper. So I had a lot of fun. It was a huge challenge. I learned a lot along the way, kinesthetically and through Skillshare. And I really hope that you guys enjoy the result. Now, of course, if you want to follow along the classes that I followed along a with. A huge thank you, of course, for Skillshare for making this video possible. I wouldn't be able to justify getting something like this and doing this activity without their help and their support of the channel. And I want to thank you for watching this video, supporting my channel and going along for the ride with me. Make sure to like this video, of course, if you did enjoy it so other people can see it. And you, of course, let me know that you want me to make more videos like this in future. Let me know what you think I should try out with this pen in future if, if I should uh, maybe try and get the oldest brush in the world, I don't know, something else like that. <laughs> Make sure to subscribe for more fun with art and creativity. And of course, if you're looking for more entertainment, there are some videos over there that you can enjoy as well. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, I bid you adieu.